All right, guys, so today I wanted to break down the common mistakes that people have made, or even I have made in terms of puppy whelping, right? So one of the most common mistakes that people have made, and even I have made, is your heat setup, right? It is always heat setup. And people are always stressed about uh, feeding your puppies on time or uh, make sure they get into colostrum. But honestly, guys, it is the temperature, right? If your temperature is not set up right, your puppy's bodies are not gonna function correctly to even, you know, even function to, to live, right? Because they don't have their, their body, right? Everybody, all of us who's, who's getting the breeding know that now, we, we should all know that. But if you, if you didn't, now you know. So how do you, how do you get the heat set up, right? All of you guys that I FaceTime recently, right? Or even way long time ago, I've, I've always seen that you guys text me, hey bro, what temperature do you set for your for your incubator? What temperature do you set in your room? Or what temperature do you set of how the puppy whelping setup is? Or the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. What is the number? What is the number? And I was like, dude, I don't even do numbers. The only number that I do is the inside of the house. Inside of your house, right? That is the only number I'm worried about, right? Because everybody lives in different locations, right? Especially you guys that live in California or Las Vegas or Nevada. You guys in your climates are always more dry or even Texas. I don't know, if, is Texas more dry? You guys in Texas, uh, especially in Houston, are you, guys, are you guys more dry, right? I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure it's more dry or is it slightly humid? I'm not sure, you guys, you guys uh, text me personally. But anyways, that is what matters, right? Humidity, it's like a, it's, it sort of matters, but temperature matters the most, right? In terms of your house, right? Your house. And I always say this because, again, as us as humans or even animals as well, you either feel more warm-blooded by nature or, or cold-blooded. And what I mean by that is, right, say for example, I, I may, you may like your house uh, to keep it at maybe 72 degrees, I get hot pretty easy, right? Even if I'm just wearing, you know, just a shirt. I go inside your house, I may feel a little hot. Like, hey man, can you turn the, can you turn the, uh, the AC on? <laughs> I like it around like 69, 70, right? Just l a little bit of difference. It, it makes a big difference, right? And that's when I feel good, but then they may feel cold to it, right? So that's exactly how it is to your puppies, right? It's the same, it's the same concept, right? It's the same concept, right boys? It is, right? They're just sleeping. They're just chilling. Um, but anyways, it, let me explain it like that. So every puppy feels temperature different, right? It don't, it, and every litter is different. Every puppy is different. Every breed is different. So that's why I always say stick to the basics. Keep it simple. Don't do too much, right? It reminds me of Karate Kid, right? I forgot this. I'm not Chinese, but they say in JB Fund or something, something like that. I don't know. I'll put the video in here. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, you're doing too much, man. And again, we heat set up. Don't do too much. Just do one heat source at a time. Whether you're using the incubator, whether you're using a heat lamp or a heat pad or just anything, man. Just just anything. Just, just make sure that there is an area that they can move in and out, right? They can either move to the hot zone or the cold zone, right? I call this, in, in what I say, I call it the 50-50, the 50, 50, right? 50% 50 hot, 50% cold, or vice versa. And let, let me let me, let me me break this down, right? So whenever your, your puppies are, are feeling cold, right? They're, like, they're gonna go to the hot zone, right? They will go to the hot zone. Whenever your puppies are feeling hot, they're gonna go to the cold zone. Or if they wanna feel in between, they're gonna go into the middle zone. Right, I showed you guys. There's a there's a layer of that heat lamp, right? The bound the range of your heat lamp. They like to stay in between that too. I showed you guys proof already, right? I have showed you guys proof, right? They 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 can go in between under heat lamp, in the middle of the heat lamp, or right? outside of it, a little bit outside of it, or completely outside of it, right? Because puppies they 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 just need a little bit of that warmth, right? Anthony Vargas, man, I was telling you FaceTime the other day. If hope you, hopefully you're watching this, my brother. Whenever I saw you, you FaceTime me, and, and you did correct it, right? You've noticed, right? I told you your puppies are all huddling up together, and they're just hugging mom because mom's body heat is there. So they're all hugging each other, they're all huddling with each other. That they're literally hugging each other, 
right? Because they need the body. But then the ones that are all behind the puppies, right? They're they're maybe they didn't get good enough body heat. So that's why some puppies they 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 can't they you know they wake up they they, they smell this the scent or they smell mom that's how they know where to go right it's because it's they're sniffing the scent right i i know this because if you if you separate mom and the pups right sometimes you do sometimes you do not have to it depends on the mom is, is is you know dumb or just just a bad mom or first time mom it kind of depends uh, i'll talk about that in another video but when you put mom in the vicinity the puppies smell and they wake up right they don't she doesn't even have to make any sounds the puppies came in here anyway and and they they know mom is in the area i want some milk right so now that we got that out of the way with the heat setup numbers don't matter the only number that you have to worry about is the inside of your house and uh how dry is it around your area if you need a humidifier get a humidifier if it's too dry but again guys you most likely nine out of ten times probably don't need it yeah you probably don't need it because if your puppies are drinking on time or eating on time it's not too hot all right i just burped sorry they're probably not going to get dehydrated but again they may just get dehydrated out of no reason because their body is just like a fast fat burning or just a burning machine dude they're so small uh, the metabolism, I don't know if there's metabolism or not, but they just break down that food so fast. And and it, it, they're just drinking liquids, right? Liquids just, just pass through. They just pass through. It's not like eating solids where it just stays in there. It takes a while for your body uh, to break down that food and, and use it as energy to, to either grow or just to, to stay alive pretty much. So, yeah, I, I, think I've, I think I've broken that down. So, remember, guys, with your heat set up, don't do too much just stick with one source either a heat pad heat lamp or incubator i personally don't use incubators but if it, if an incubator is working for you great use it right use whatever works best for you and your litter and adapt to things right adapt to things and, and change up and, and, and what i mean by that is there's, there's no 100 rule to to always follow right to always follow and like for example like even two feeding there's you don't always do one cc per ounce method for example your puppy weighs eight ounces that does not mean you feed your puppy eight ounces especially their neonatal like newborn they just straight up came out the came out from the c-section or came out from the womb oh heck no you no no you you will overfeed that pup and kill it literally i've i've i've, I've done it before i'll tell you guys i've, I've done it before right it, the, you do too much puppy chokes up chokes back up gets back into his lungs now it gets pneumonia and now it's gonna die Woo, man i've been through it all i've i've been through it all and it's all right I, I make mistakes all the time right all of us humans make mistakes all the time so that's why i'm telling y'all my mistakes right so you guys can learn in the future whenever you guys start whipping your livers and yeah i think i think i broke that down in terms of your puppy weapon setup so another another mm, mistake that people have make right is uh not gathering your supplies right not gathering your supplies because uh, a lot of you guys have called me you're either going through crap right now or on the other hand it's you want to learn the information or what to do beforehand before crap starts to go down and, and third, um, you guys, whenever y'all's litter drop, that's when you guys call me to to make sure, am I doing everything correct? Because a lot of you guys like to uh, duplicate, and that's completely fine. Y'all like to copy the exact replica of, of my ghetto puppy whelping setup, right? I, I use the easy whelp system now, um, but hey, kitty poo works. People have bashed on me saying it was ghetto. <laughs> but it is what it is it works for me it works for me they they can say whatever they can say they use the incubators they pay 1500 hey 1500 for the incubator like a pet brooder 90 hey i got it too i got it too but i i don't i do not use it it's, it's garbage to me it's garbage there's just no need there's no need to use a pet brooder 90 unless your puppy had like needs oxygen if you if you have multiple puppies that need oxygen or or going through respiratory infections or um is it upper respiratory infection upi upper respiratory i, I don't know uh, upper respiratory infection and yeah i mean that's the only time you use an incubator but even that it's garbage i i personally don't use it so 
keep it basic keep it simple i always say don't do too much so yeah man gathering all supplies guys and two feeding kits i do sell two feeding kits for 55 currently at the moment um i am not charging anymore on <laughs> usually uh before when i sell my two feeding kits i would i would um I would charge for I would not charge for teaching you how to two feed now. So that's just actually just gonna be a whole separate cost. Just like whenever I FaceTime you guys, it's just gonna be that. Just just do a FaceTime. I'll teach you how to do that. Uh, how to teach you how, anything that uh, you can ask me, right? Anything you can ask me. Just that's just the FaceTime call itself. Um, yeah, I don't do it no more. It's uh, it's it's a lot in my hands, literally. And uh, but yeah, let me um yeah. So get your two feeding kits. Uh, I recommend it. A French. If you're not if you're not gonna buy from me, completely okay. It's fine. If you have a locally, shoot, man, even better. Uh, but I recommend an eight French catheter, and gather like five cc syringes and ten cc syringes, and then um, the reason why you want five cc syringes so that way whenever you are feeding them newborns or you ever do need to, it's more specific. Whenever like uh, it's more in minute detail is what I'm trying to say. Whenever you are trying to feed them, right? So. And then whenever they get bigger, then you can start feeding them the, the 10 cc syringe and uh, you can feed them a lot more instead of having to always get more milk, get more milk and then feed them uh, whenever they, they do get to that one cc per ounce method in, uh, in about a week, right? So yeah, big chapters into my book that I'm currently uh, writing up about. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And to get your IV bags, lactated ringers, uh, you can get it with your vet. Hopefully your vet is not stingy, but you can get it through online. I personally use Chewy.com. And whenever you check out or buy it, like add it to your cart and then you check it out, it does have to get prescribed with your vet, okay? I will tell you guys, it does have to get prescribed with, with your vet for you to get it. And yeah, you have IV fluids. And then uh, supplements that I do recommend is Dogzymes. I'm not, not sponsored by them, but Dogzymes, uh, puppy, like fading puppy support. That's a really good product to have. If you want to be extra, you can you can even buy plasma too, right? You can buy plasma. It works good too. Um, that's some good stuff. Teach you, teach you guys some game. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it right uh yeah i think i think that's it oh and the milk that i use is breeder's edge right breeder's edge Ooh, super good super good i'm not sponsored by them either um yeah some of you guys uh some some companies have reached out to me to to do sponsorships and yeah i'm, I'm thinking about it uh but the thing is guys like i will only sponsor products that i personally use and that I personally like to like that I personally use and, and that I know that's good, right? If it's if it's crap, it's crap. I, I will not use it. I mean that that's just me as a person. Like I I I'm not a sellout. Like I, I tell you guys, if it's trash, it's trash. I don't I don't want to sponsor it. I mean, I mean that's just how I am. Even fishing products, like there's some brands out there that are just straight superior and I will not use any other brand. And, and brands do matter, right? Brands do matter. Right, um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, I use Breeders Edge Puppy Milk. Ooh, I'm telling y'all, ooh, it's so good. It's amazing. It says it's got colostrum. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, but hey, anything extra helps out. Uh, what I do notice with that puppy milk replacement is uh, it gives very, very good, firm, solid stools, or uh, very good in the in terms of helping their their GI issues or, or um, the the supplement in terms of helping out the gut, right? The gut health, ooh, super good. So that oh, every time I use that milk, the, the gut health is always, always good. And it's got probiotics as well. And even that, I mean, that's honestly sometimes the only thing that I use, I don't even need to use the dog zymes because that 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 Breeders Edge is, is, is just that good. It's just that good. I'm, I'm telling y'all, I am telling y'all, it's just that good, right? Hopefully I get sponsored by them, <laughs> sponsored by them and, um, yeah it's it's good it's some good stuff i tell y'all and um yeah i think that's pretty much it in terms of uh teaching you guys so yeah th those just a couple mistakes that i've seen people have make don't do too much use one heat uh heat source at a time and don't use an incubator if you don't have to right only use it when you need when you need the oxygen for your puppies or your 
your puppies or you have medication with that oxygen support, yes, I, I highly recommend, yes, use it. And uh, have IV, IV fluids and, and lactator ringers. Your vet don't want to teach you, well, poss possibility, learn from somebody who's a professional, right? And uh, try to try to learn from your vet. It's it's a do or die. And if you don't know how to two feed, call me, right? Call me. A everybody who's FaceTime me has done a good job, right? Even if you take a little longer, completely fine, right? Completely fine. But most of the time, you guys don't take too long. It's it's two feeding is not hard, but if it's your first time, it's it's pretty difficult. It is. It, it's it's hard. Like when I was first learning it, I was scared. I was like, I think I'm gonna drown my puppy, kill my puppy. I don't even know if I'm gonna go in the wrong, you know, pipe and, and kill him, right? I don't even know. Like, am I gonna am I gonna damage his uh, his vocals or his throat? I've I've been through all that, man. I've been in, I've been in the shoes, and uh, yeah, learn how to two feed, and then uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy the free game. I love y'all. Peace.